Amen. He alone is worthy to be praised. Yes. I don't know about you, but I came for a celebration today because I ain't to live a life. Yes. Amen. I know that we're going to miss her, but more than anything else, she lived a life while she was here. And I know for me, I saw the love that was in her heart. You can't fake love. And every time I saw her, it was always that love. So I thank God for the opportunity to love her back. And that she loved me. And I knew that she loved me. Amen. But I wish I could stand here and tell you that um, I would stand here and talk about Aunt Ada. But Aunt Ada has lived her life. And we all got to go this way one day. Whether we want to or not. But one day, we all will have to take the same journey. And I will tell you that the life that you live on this side will determine the life that you have on the other side. And it's your decision whether or not you make that decision. God won't make you. He'll tell you. But he won't make you. You're going to have to choose for yourself. But we all going to have to go this way. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus, we come, Father, just lifting you up, giving you glory and honor, Father God. Father, we know that without you, Father God, we are nothing and we can do nothing. So, Father God, I ask you today, Father God, as I stand before your people, Father God, I ask you to kill my flesh and allow your Holy Spirit to speak to me and through me. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 How many of you know that this is a celebration? Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you again. How many of you know that this is a celebration? Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Amen. I know people say that it's a funeral, but I believe that when you live a life of Christ, I believe that it's a celebration when they go out. And I believe that it's sadness when a newborn coming to this world because of the life of this world today. Amen. Amen. But we have something to celebrate today that I ate and lived her life for almost 78 years. And that is a blessing. Amen. Amen. She went past the three schools. <laughs> Amen. And I'm hoping that I can do the same thing. Yes. Amen. But to God be the glory. Amen. But there is a word from the Lord. I have nothing to say to you, but God does. Amen. Amen. Um, I will be coming today from 2 Timothy um, chapter 3, verse 12. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. And it reads, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Amen. Amen. And I like to use for a subject today, if I may. Love is something that we do. Love is something that we do. If we have a desire to live a godly life, we will suffer persecution. But love is what we do. Love is our action word. You can tell me all day that you love me. But love is demonstrated. And the reason that we know that love is demonstrated is <coughs> because Christ demonstrated for us. Amen. And he is our ultimate example. Amen. Y'all still with me? Amen. This is a celebration. Right. Amen. But love is something that we do. Amen. But the text says that yes, and all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So uh, I want to just stop by today and leave a few nuggets with you that you know, if you're going through some persecution, you are on the right path. Amen. Because the uh, if you have a desire to live a godly life, all, all jacked up and messed up and tore up from the floor, but if we just have a desire to live a godly life, there will be persecution in our life. Right. Amen. But persecution does not stand a chance when the love of God is in your heart. Amen. Amen. You, you got to understand that when, when, when we have the love of God in our heart, that we go through many trials and tribulations. But we are able to stand because we was equipped to last. We were equipped for the persecution. God already told us before persecution 
became that. If we have a desire, if we even think about it, if we even want to serve God, if we want to just love God, that persecution is awaiting us. But God never promised us, listen, listen to this, but God never promised us that he would deliver us from it, but that he would deliver us through it. And, and we got to understand that no matter what we go through in life, that God is able. That there's nothing too hard for God. So therefore, we got to hold on to what we know to be true. Amen. Amen. I was sharing with my cousin earlier that so many times we know that we need to serve God, but it's something about uh, the fear of the unknown. Because, uh, because we don't have control and, and, and we don't have uh, the say so, uh, we, fear has a way of taking over. But I'm here to tell you that when you trust God, you live by faith, not fear. And then fear has a way to try to interrupt what faith is doing. But you got to hold on to what you believe to be true. You cannot allow fear to cause you not to love people like you should love, to serve people like you should serve them. You got to understand that fear paralyzes you. Anything that's paralyzed is helpless. It needs help. But faith, you know it to be true. It don't look like it. It might not feel like it, but you know it to be true. And we got to stand on that. We got to hold on to what we know to be true. Love is something that we do. I cannot stress enough about this love thing because the world has lost its mind. And the reason being something because we don't understand that love you cannot buy. And so many of us, we call love uh, uh, being demonstrated by the material things of this world. But I've never seen a hearse go down the beltway with a U-Haul behind it. You can't take that stuff with you. But love is something that no one can steal from you because God gave it to you. And if God gave it to you, it's in your heart. And you got to know it. You can't doubt it. To fake it, you can't do that. Love is something that you cannot fake it to make it. The real you gonna show up. Amen. And when you show up, you gonna show out. <laughs> but love is something that we do. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, it says, and we have known and believed the love that God has for us, that God is love, uh -huh, that God is love, Amen. and he who abides in love abides in God. Amen. And God in him. Yeah. See, see, you can't fake it because if God is in you, it's going to be in your action. It's going to be in your behavior. And, and it has nothing to do with the behavior of the other person. So many times we make excuses. Anybody tired of making excuses for not doing what we know we're supposed to do? We make excuses. You know, I, I didn't want to do that, but I did it because of how they treated me. You're going to go to hell if you ain't on people to treat you right. <laughs> you better learn how to have some peace within peace was yourself. And know that the love of God dwells in me. It lives in me. Love is who I am. It ain't about the other person whether they love you or not. It's about your relationship with God. Amen. And if you love God and you know he loves you, regardless of what everybody else do, you got to stand on what you know to be true. Wow. And in verse 19, I'm sorry, 1 John 4, 18 says, there is no fear in love. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's no fear in loving people. If you are fearful to, to love people, then you got to question your walk with God. Because when you walk with God, your love is perfect. Well, bitch, there ain't nobody perfect. We are perfect when we are with God. Y'all still here? But the Bible goes on to say that, uh, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. Fear will paralyze you. It will torment you. You don't have no peace, no rest. You are stressed out. Most of us are stressed out not because 
because of the life that we live, we are stressed because we are carrying somebody else's burden that don't even want to change. <laughs> stress. We go into our grave stressed behind somebody that don't want to change. That don't even have a desire to love people. We mad at the righteous because they want to agree with you. Don't speak it. You might have learned how to live because all of us got to go this way. And I wish I could stand here and tell you that somebody else can cause you to go. No, you got to get it right for yourself. Well, bitch, you know, I need, to, you know, God, God is working on me. If you recognize that He's working on you, then you got enough to start all over. Amen. What you waiting on? Well, you know, I'm just waiting on them to change because I got myself together. I'm going to ask you again, what are you waiting on? <laughs> Keep on waiting on others when they don't desire what you desire. They want to do it their way. It ain't but one way, church, and that's God's way. Oh, Bishop, you act like you perfect. That ain't what I said. But I thank God that he sent somebody about it that, that spoke a word and I heard God speak. I took my eyes off the flesh and I, and I put my, my heart with God. Bishop, they can't tell me nothing. They ain't living right. You about to learn God's voice. Because God will use anybody to get a word to you that your life will change for the rest of your life. Okay, I'm almost finished. In, in verse 19, I'm still in 1 John 4, 18, 19, and it goes on to say, we love him because he first loved us. We, look, look, we are an example of what he did first. Somebody gonna get this right here. Because some people have not changed simply because they are demonstrating what you have done and what you are doing. God demonstrated his love, so therefore we became love. Those that received him. And, and some of us need to change the way we live because there are people in their lives that have not changed because uh, they are watching us. Amen. And they're doing what we're doing and they feel that it's all right. Show them God. You'd be surprised at the people that you can lead to Christ if you grab Christ for yourself. Amen. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it, it, it talks about uh, that we are made in God's image and in his likeness. That means that God equipped us. He created us to function like him. Mm -hmm. what, what do you mean, Bishop? He, look, we are supposed to function in love. Y'all uh, got to grab this thing because if we are made in his image and in his likeness, uh -huh, we ought to function like God. Amen. The problem is we haven't recognized where we came from. Amen. And if we don't know who we belong to, we definitely can't function like somebody that we don't know. Amen. Oh, Bishop, I don't understand. I don't understand why my children act in the way that they act in. Pick the mirror up. <laughs> Take a look because they made in your image. Well, I, I used to be like that, but I'm not like that now. But have you corrected them yet? Because until you correct the seed that you planted, it's going to be what you planted. Reach it, Bishop. Oh, Bishop, I ain't like that no more. But have you corrected it? Have, 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 you, have, you, have you turned the dirt over and plant new seeds? Jesus. Because the, the Bible tells us those that he loves, he disciplined. Huh? And, and have you disciplined them yet? Are you still worrying about them caring? Look, or worrying about your feelings? Are you worrying about their feelings? Well, you know, I don't want them to be mad at me. Who cares if they mad if I can save their life? Love is something we do. 
you say you love them, then that means that this one cannot be absent. It has to be present. Because love comes with discipline. Well, you don't understand. They might uh, run to the streets. I'd rather for them to act crazy at home than to go to the streets. You don't understand that you just took life from them when you refuse to discipline them. Because love is something that we do. It ain't something that we just say. It's what we do. Love is something that's demonstrated. Uh -huh. and, and love is something that it don't fall away because you don't love me back. Love is not something that uh, is worrying about your feelings. Because love corrects. Love rebukes. Uh -huh. And so we got to stand up and be bold like the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm almost done. Yeah. Romans 5 8. It said, but God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In all their foolishness, you still got to demonstrate the love of God. In all their negative behavior, we still responsible for demonstrating the love of God. Uh, Y'all got to hit me in here because all of us got to go this way. And we want to be able to have a celebration. Don't think the preacher gonna preach you to heaven because you can't do it. <laughs> Believe it or not, your obituary is being written while you you are sitting right here. Amen. The life that you live. Amen. Can't nobody preach you to heaven. It's the life that you live, that you choose. First John four seven. It said, "Be love. Let us love one another, for love is of God." And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Listen to, this, listen to what the scripture says. It says everyone who loves is born of God. That, that means when we are born, that means that we have a birth has taken place. And birth is the beginning of something new. Yes, indeed. Uh, Y'all got to grab this because we, we all have to be born again. And, and that means that we got to start over. We don't know nothing, but we are open to learn. That we, we got a willing spirit for change. Yes. We've given birth. New beginning. Start all over. What the look? Every look. Your past is behind you. And the only ones that's gonna talk about your past is those that haven't came, haven't recognized yet that they need to be born again. Wow. Sorry. It's a new beginning of something. Verse 8 said, he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Amen. How can we say we love God and we can't even love the ones that we see every day? Amen. We see our sisters and brothers in need and we won't even help them. We walk by them and then we criticize how they live. Amen. Well, well, you know, they got to get theirs because I got mine. But let me tell you something. You can have it. And still be nothing. Amen. Wait a minute, bitch. What did you say? Because, let me tell you. When you go through, that's what strengthens us to carry on. It's the trials and tribulations that we endure that strengthen us. If you don't go through nothing, you can always stay in the same state that you're in. Our strength comes from going through. Just imagine if, if you got a goal to, to work out in the gym, y'all people that work out. You, you, you got a goal to say, you know what, next year this time I'm going to be lifting 500 pounds. And just imagine if you don't even go to the gym, but yet you saying, I'm going to be lifting 500 pounds next year this time. <laughs> ain't nothing going to happen. You don't say it a whole lot, but ain't nothing going to change. <laughs> but if you go in there and you work out and you work out and you work out, you might not make 500, but you sure going to be stronger than what you used to be. Yes. You got to practice what you say out of your mouth. Amen. Words are powerful. Wow. And some of us need to speak up because we don't say nothing. Amen. We go for anything. Amen. Anything that say, we just, we just, well, you know, I'm going to keep praying for them. <laughs> Speak some life into them. Amen. Yes. Tell them they need to change. But make sure when you tell them that they need to change, that you are in a place to say it. Don't tell them they need to stop 
sinning and, and you sinning in front of them. That's right. That's right. Tell them they need to change and, and, and you need to change. Yeah. Give them some hope and tell them, you know what? I ain't got it all together, but I'm striving for something. And, and you know, it will be good to have you to, to strive with them. Right. Don't kill that hope. Give them hope that there is life in Christ. Yes. The reason that my life changed is because I believe in Christ. And the same God that saved me is the same God that will save you. I know I couldn't have did it without it. Well, you know, I, I just need time. I said that too. But guess what? We don't own time, so we can't set dates for time. So if you knew that today was your last day, how would you live? If you knew that God was going to call you on April the 9th, how would you live today? How would you treat people today? See, because love is something that we do. How long are you going to stay mean and nasty? How long are you going to sit on the front row in the church and you don't love the people? How long? You know, I was sharing with the minister earlier that the church should have no walls. We come to the church like a gas station. We come to be filled, but we got to go out of here. Because the real ministry is out there. But we don't like to go out there because we are fearful of the unknown. But your change has to come from right here. Where God dwells. Amen. Where he lives. Love is something that we do, church. And I'm telling you, if God ain't involved, then you got to examine your love for people. Amen. Because without God, our love for people is going to be materialistic. And who treat me right? The love is so much bigger than that. It ain't nothing you can do to keep me from loving you. Because my love is unconditional. And that's that love that no matter how you live, I'm still going to love you. I will not give up on you. Because if you still got breath in your body, there's still hope for you. Amen. So all I'm saying to you today is make a decision that you know what, if don't nobody else go, I'm going to serve God for myself. Amen. You'd be surprised at the lives that you will affect. Because there's something about when you get connected to God that it has a way of drawing on people. And it's something about it. You can't always explain it, but you just know it to be true. It's something about how people used to treat you, even if they haven't changed. But it's something about the way they treat you that, that uh, different from what they used to treat you. And it, it's not the flesh, but it's the spirit of God that lives within you. So we got to grab this thing, y'all. Because I'm telling you that one day, all of us going to take this road right. Amen. Somebody going to be pushing us across the front. One day. And we got to make a decision. What we going to do. Please don't deceive yourself and say, I got time. Time is not on your side. It's not on your side. No matter what you do, each and every day you get up. One thing I can promise you, if you wake up at seven and you keep living, you're going to see eight. It ain't going to stop because you don't feel like going now. <laughs> Time going to keep going. And every day that comes, it's, the closer we get to this day. And y'all know what's going on out here in the world, man. You don't need me to tell you. It's wicked. It's evil. And we got to prepare ourselves. Because we don't ever know when it's going to hit our house. But what we do know, it's going to hit our house. For certain, we know that we all going to go this way. Amen? Amen. And let your funeral be preached right now while you're living. Amen. So won't nobody stand over you and lie. <laughs>
I just want to let you know that Christ is the way. He died. He suffered. He died. And he got up. What are you saying, bitch? I don't care how low you go. If you got breath in your body, you can still get up. You can still get up. Some of us have never been to jail. But in our mind, we've been locked up for a long time. Wow. <laughs> Come up out of there. God has given you the key to open the door. Now's your time. Come on, let's give God a hand for this. Place. safe journey to Rest Haven Cemetery. And at this time, we want to ask the ministers, will you please come down and 